How and when is increasing technology disrupting our old systems and our old world? In this video we are going to see that the old world, including its old structures, is disappearing at a rapid pace, making way for a new world with new systems. We are not living in an era of change, but in a change of era. Not so long ago, we humans still lived in a world that was predictable and stable. The world we lived in was no bigger than our eyes could see, and no bigger than our feet can bring us. We lived in relatively small communities, where small local changes sometimes took several generations to become truly visible. Our world was a stable and predictable place to live in. But today we live in a world that is unstable and therefore unpredictable. We live in a world that is globally connected through smart telecom technology. A world in which if something happens on one side, we know it on the other side within minutes or seconds. A world in which significant global changes no longer need generations, but months, weeks, and sometimes days. Our world has become an unstable and unpredictable environment. Every day we see new technological breakthroughs of which we didn't even dare to dream five years ago. We see the convergence of technologies such as artificial intelligence, robotics, big data, and advanced sensor technology that together make completely new economies possible. And the end of these technological advances is nowhere near. Even more, so I think this is only the beginning. If you ask me as a futurist what the next 5 to 10 years would look like, I would summarize this in a picture like this. I truly believe that, literally, a tsunami of radical change is coming at us. A tidal wave of digitization, automation and disruption. It will destroy old systems and old organizations. Meanwhile, many people and organizations see this tidal wave coming. And these people and organizations experience stress. Imagine lying here in the water before this wave, in a boat. A large oil tanker or a small yacht, it doesn't really matter. Everybody who looks out of the partridge gate and sees this wave coming thinks, ouch, are we going to survive this? Or will we be lying on pieces on the bottom? And it doesn't matter if you are the captain of the ship, the helmsman or the sailor. Everyone experiences the same stress. And so it is with organizations today. When people look out of the window and they see the tidal wave of digitization and automation rapidly approaching their organization, they experience this as a huge threat and they will start to ask themselves questions. Are we going to survive this as an organization? And the employee will wonder if his job is still safe. And the manager will wonder if his department is still relevant. And the director and shareholders will wonder if the company can change course fast enough. But it is all a matter of perception and mindset. Some people in organizations have a different mindset. And they see this tidal wave not as a huge threat, but as a huge opportunity. These people and organizations have the mindset of a server. And they therefore know exactly when and where they need to be to utilize the enormous power of the wave and turn it into exponential progress. We know most of these organizations from the apps on our smartphones. These are organizations that have managed to win hundreds of millions of customers within a few years time. Because they have developed a new easy to use user interface that could help people, many customers, to manage complexity. But if you have always been told that waves are dangerous and that you need to stay away from them, then your first reaction is probably stress. Your prefrontal cortex and your neocortex brain switches off and you go on the autopilot of the primitive brain. In other words, you go into fight, flight or freeze mode. You will fight and try to stop the wave, which of course will not work. Either you flight or you freeze and do nothing. On the other hand, if you have always been told that waves are a fascinating natural phenomenon and that you have to respect this natural force, but you can also make it work for you, then perhaps your first reaction to the wave is, wow, what a perfect wave. How can I use the immense power of this wave to make speed on my surfboard? And people with this mindset will study the wave pattern and therefore they will know exactly where and when the wave will start to swell and then jump on it to make speed. And maybe things don't go well the first few times, but gradually one gets better and learns to anticipate the wave better and jump on it on the right moment. In the recent years, I've done a lot of research into disruptive wave patterns in our society. In particular, I focused on the social waves as a result of the introduction of new disruptive technologies. Because I have a technological background, I assumed that technology was the driver of those waves. But after further research, uh, this turned out not to be the case. 
I find out that precisely human needs and behavior are the driving force behind these great social changes. Technology helps people to manage complexity. And the better technology does that, the more disruptive the effect is. Think for example of the iPad, an easy to use device with which children, the elderly and people with disabilities can enlarge their world because they can now communicate more easily with their environment. Let me give you an example. Steve Jobs said nicely, technology is all about enabling ordinary people to do extraordinary things. And what he means is that technology is just an enabler that helps people to do things they couldn't do before. And technology actually works as an interface that enables people to manage complexity. And the more a new interface enables people to manage complexity, the more disruptive the technology generally is, and the greater the disruptive effect on traditional systems. The first web browser was a simple user interface that enabled people to find and share information on the internet without the need to have programming uh, skills and knowledge. And Apple, for example, launched the iPhone, a new user interface that made the personal computer truly personal. An easy to use computer in your pocket, which, which you could easily manage complex things and have access to unlimited music and the internet. Disruptive technologies literally spread like wildfire. To give you a concrete example of such a rapid spread, not so long ago, to buy a single or an artist album, you had to go to the shopping street in your village or city. Then you walked into a music store where you could listen to a CD with headphones on your head. If you liked the music, you could buy the whole album. But now the internet was there and they were able to compress music through the MP3 format. Then came Apple with a new user interface, the iPod and the iPhone and their music service iTunes which allow you to download songs directly from the internet to your device. And Steve Jobs told us that with the iPod or iPhone, you could have a thousand songs in your pocket. And with this new user interface and digital music distribution, Apple disrupted the entire music industry in a few years. But not long after that, another company came along and they said, we offer you 40 million songs in your pocket for only 9.95 a month. Of course, we all know this company. I'm talking about Spotify. Spotify built a new user interface that allowed people to stream music tracks to their device. And this way you can see that even the disruptors are being disrupted. And there's a lot ahead of us because new technologies like artificial intelligence and holographic technologies like augmented reality and mixed reality introduce completely new user interfaces. User interfaces which are much more user friendly than the user interfaces that we have today. Later on in this course, we will go into this in more detail. What we see is that technological disruption affects every industry, both directly and indirectly. We've just heard an example of how Apple disrupted the music industry and how Apple in turn was disrupted by Spotify. These are fairly direct forms of technological disruption, replacing an entire physical supply chain from recording studio to your CD player with a digital supply chain in the cloud. We have seen this, for example, in the photo industry and the film industry as well. But there is also an indirect form of disruption possible. Look for example at the automotive industry. Disruptive tech companies like Tesla and Google are busy developing electric and autonomous cars. And they all create cars that eventually could be able to drive fully autonomous, level 4 or level 5 autonomy. In short, this means that the driver hardly has to pay attention to the road anymore and that the technology automates all tasks and can therefore bring people from A to B completely autonomous. What turns out is that if you put a human being behind a steering wheel, on average it makes one collision in every 100,000 kilometers. Autonomous cars can reduce the number of collisions quite quickly to maybe one in 10 million kilometers. And that probably means a 99% reduction in the number of car damages. So if you are working in the car body shop industry, you might have a problem in the near future. And why, for example, insure a car if it is autonomous and in the rare case that an autonomous car causes a collision, then perhaps it is the manufacturer's fault. So if you are working in the car insurance industry, you also might have a problem. Tesla is currently working on making their entire fleet of cars suitable to be used as an autonomous cab. Imagine you are at work and your car is taking old people to the hospital and you get paid for it. So if you are working in a cab industry, your job might disappear in the next 5 or 10 years. I'll just give a few examples, but the list is almost endless. Technological disruption is going to have a profound impact on nearly every aspect of our society. You might start asking yourself some questions by now. 
like, wow, if technological disruption is spreading so fast and so many industries are disrupted, what is still safe? What do we need to focus on as an organization if we want to remain relevant in the future? What skills do I need to develop as an individual to stay relevant in a world that is changing so fast? Or how can I embrace this tidal wave of change that is going to affect so many things and use it to my advantage? These are all questions I asked myself until I discovered something that totally changed my perception of the future. About nine years ago, I made a discovery. A discovery that totally changed my mindset regarding the future of our society, organizations and work. All I've done is decode the pattern I discovered and translate it into a model, which I will share with you in this masterclass. The model helps you to look at change in a positive way and to embrace change no matter how radical this change might be. Well, we have come to the end of this video again. I hope you found this video inspiring to watch and I look forward to see you in the next video.